Hello and w welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to show you how to do the girl's best friend, a diamond. A string diamond to be precise. And we're going to have lots of fun. You'll find the pattern in the show notes below. Just hit see more and it'll, it'll give you the PDF for the pattern that you're going to need. This is going to make some really lovely quilts. And I do have an older picture that uh, I've made this pattern a couple of times. And it's just, it's stunning when it's all done. So come on in, let's get to the sewing. Okay, here we are now. I've cut out my, my diamond. And you see it's like basically it's, you know, a great big one, two, and three. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tracing wheel. This is something we used when we were sewing clothes. And I forget whose this is. I think it's my mom. And I'm just going to mark the top of the lines. Now it leaves a perforated edge that I can see from both sides. And I don't have to worry then about not having enough uh, fabric. Now I'm just going to do both lines here on the where I'm saying the background color goes. Now you're putting background only on two sides and then when you're finished sewing them together into a long uh, lone star or a real fun border what you're going to do is you're going to go you're going to do the other side. Now I don't know if you can see the perforated edge Right? Like you can see this on both sides of the of the paper, right? So I'm going to, I'm not even going to do the other ones because now you've got uh, an idea of what we're looking for here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the sewing. Now, when you're sewing on uh, foundation paper piecing, because this is kind of like foundation paper piecing, but not really. What you're going to need is a couple of strips of different colors, and we're just going to take one strip and another strip. It doesn't matter how fancy they are, and you're going to flip it over and you're going to work along the back. So what you're doing is you're lining it up, you're just making strings, right? So you can do the strings any way you want, and at the end, you... okay. At the end, that's when you do all the trimming and they actually look pretty good. I, um, when I first did this, I did this uh, with black as a background. And when we were done, the quilt looked like it was stained glass. It was amazing. A lot of, a lot of, uh, we had a lot of people going, oh my, when it was done. So it was, it was very interesting. I'm just going to do two of them just so... I have two parts. I'll mix it up a little bit. There we go. I'll do that one later. I don't need to do it now. Yeah, it looks really, really cool when it's done. Because you just take all your fun colors and you just start putting them in. Right? Now, and this is easy sewing. I have taken this pattern to retreats. I've taken this, you know, it's it's one of those ones that you sit mindlessly. So now in order to make a Lone Star, depending how big you make your Lone Star, I made a queen size quilt and I needed 200 of these pieces to work with. So that's something you might want to keep in mind too. It's, they're, they're big and you have to, It's a big queen size quilt that you make out of them. And we just keep whipping along just like this. We fold it out of the way. Finger press this lettuce. You just finger press along and you just start using up your strings. That's all you do with this. This is one of those easy little blocks to do. And You don't need too much precision here. So, well, let's get some red in there. Well, let's get some red. When you make 200 of them, it sure uses up fabric quickly. It's like amazing how fast the 
the fabric goes into these blocks. And I just rough trim around where I'm going to be, you know, like I'm not, it's not a precision trim. And this, the quarter, yes, the seam allowance is included on the pattern. So that's something that you got to keep in mind too. Um, you can make it smaller, like the queen size ends up being four by, or five by five diamonds. Like you need eight of them, right? So that's why you need that many, that many diamonds. Okay, let's get a, ooh, let's get a teal color in. Let's get some teal going. Yeah, let's pull some of that. So, whew. There we go. And sometimes when you have, let's say, you know, you're doing like a hundred of these, you just keep going until the strip is gone. And that way you, it, it's more efficient. sewing and I'll show you what this looks like at the end when I'm all done okay okay so here we are now I set my sewing machine here to 25 to 30 stitches per inch and I'm just using plain old copy you know paper from the printer I'm not using anything and you can see here it's actually coming apart right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some tape before it comes apart and just tape it so that it all stays together and in place. Now, what I want to do with this is I want to take this magic little wand. I know you can't see it. There's a little plastic thing that I use. And it's real thin. And I just run my, my line right along its edge. And then I fold the paper back out of the way. Just like this, right? Now I've got, I over sewed this. I just decided just, I'm not going to worry about where the seams are. I'm not gonna worry about it. I can use this for something else. I can, you know, put it in a, into a little string block on its own, just all sewn together like that. It'll look fine. Now you see some of this is falling apart pretty badly already because my stitches are, are really, uh, close together. So now I just go along and I trim. I trim on this and then I trim on the other side. Oh, I'm there. So and what this will do is add a quarter inch seam allowance so I can put a strip down. Now there we go and that's going to be Yeah, I'm gonna have to tape all this back together. <laughs> oh well, that's one of these one of these things that happens all the time, you know. I'm trying to pull this out of the way. Now, I you notice here I put a bigger piece here because I didn't want a bunch of little pieces hanging off the edge, right? So I wanted one big piece, and I'm gonna put that into a string block at some point. So I'll just leave it together. So now I've got all this. Now I'm going to tape this edge together just so it holds together because this looks like this block is going to fall apart. Right? So I am I'm just going to tape all that together very quick. Yeah, so it stays together. Okay. Now I've got one and a half inch strips. And I know we're only doing this on the two sides. So when you put this into a Lone Star, you're going to then have one long strip. Oh, I just made a mess of that piece of tape. You're going to have one long strip that's going to be just black that goes along the outside edge, right? To finish off your, your 
star. Now this also gives a place for all these seams to rest into, right? So it's a nice little way of finishing your block. So and I'm going to trim the other one here right quick. Now you'll notice here, I didn't even go to the end on this one here. I don't need to. I'm a quarter inch past that that first line, so I don't need to go any further, right? So basically, we're going to do the same thing again. Trim off one, trim off the other. Used a big piece at the end. I went and got something out of my crumbs that was big enough to cover the spot. Ah, yeah. This is a fun way thing to do. You know, you can sit and chat. You can take it off to a sew date. You can chat away and not really think about what you're doing. You know, and this part you can leave for another day and still have something really nice to look at. There we go. Oops. There. <laughs> and I'm going to tape all that flat before that falls off. <laughs> Oops, I messed it up. There we go. I'll just take that off. Okay, what I mean by messing it up is I, my little corner came off, so I'm going to line up my lines because it's been perforated by that tracing wheel. The tracing wheel just adds more perforation, so these things actually start falling apart faster. But the tracing wheel is a good tool to use if you want to see where you're supposed to be sewing. It's a, a fun way. Fun way too to mark both, both sides. I don't have one of those light boards or those uh, lighting things. Can you see what I'm doing here? They, I don't have one of those, so I don't worry about it. I just, okay, I have this and this is what I'm working with and I'm going to do my best to make it work. So I don't need a bunch of fancy gadgets. Our grandmother certainly didn't need a bunch of fancy stuff. Okay, and there we go. Okay, put that across there and that across there and hopefully it's all marked in place. There it is. Okay, so now we're going to add the black. So the first side we're going to do is this side here. Now I have cut one and a half inch strips, just black, plain black. I'm going to use that as my background color. It um, does give a really cool effect, and I'm just going to lay this on like so, and tr roughly trim this, just like that. That's it. Now, if I was dealing with a long, skinny piece, I would be very tempted right now to be pinning in place, but the pinning sometimes makes the work curve, right? So, I'm just going to put this in like so, and start my seam, just like this. And check to make sure it's all in place. Yes, it is. Go with the crate. Go half an inch further than I need to. Right? Just to... There we go. Now I'm going to do this. Just like this. And... It doesn't matter if you make it a little bit bigger than what's needed. It's better to be bigger than to be too short. If you're too short, you just have to start f figuring out how to correct it, right? And basically, it's just add on more. With this, something like this, you just add on more uh, fabric. So I'm going to run right along that line. Okay. There, just like that. And now I'm going to flip this out of the way. Just like so. Just like so. Right? I can see what's going on. And... Okay, now I'm going to do the part three. And I'm just going to run it like this. You need it to go past this X. This X here. See where it crosses here, right there? You need your fabric to go past that little point, that point right there. So that's where you need to keep your, your fabric in line. Okay. And then you just wherever here and you flip it over 
just like so. There we go. And you run down this line. So you don't need a bunch of pins and you don't need a bunch of anything. Okay, we got this done right to the end. Take the other side, okay? Move this back as far as we can go. And I'm just going to take where this line is. And it's about there. It's a good thing I have lots of this black hanging about. There. And I take it, it's laying in the right spot. And I take it and flip it and start running it under my, my machine, aiming for that line so we can have a perfect place for this. Now this is a five and a half unfinished diamond. So that means it will finish, the, the color part will finish, uh, the, this will finish at five inches because of your seam allowances. Now, once you finish trimming all of this, Okay, so there we go, right? So now I'm just going to trim the one here to show you how we do this, because this is really quick. Grab just a bigger ruler, and I'm going to run just on the outside edge, right? So this, this far line here is going to be where I trim, and I'm going to trim all four sides. Just like that. Push that off to the side. And there we go. What you'll end up with is about a quarter inch of black showing on the front, but that it'll look just it'll look just like glass or like stained glass. It'll be beautiful. Okay, so now there we go with this and with this. And now that's all it is. We get to our ta-da moment. Okay, one more thing before we do the ta-da moment is we're going to do a quick eight stitch around. Now I'm doing one eighth inch, just very quick, one eighth inch all the way around. Um, this helps stabilize your bias edges and it prevents your stretching. Now I go all the way around, including the part that is like strips, the strips, right? Just because I'm here, I might as well do it. You know, it's one of those things, it doesn't take long to do, and you end up with perfect looking blocks, you know, so it's easy enough. It's a string block, basically what you're doing is you're making fabric when you're doing string blocks, so. Anyways, we'll do our tie down moment once I get all of these done. Okay, so here's our tie down moment, and they've all, all of these have been stay stitched. Now, if you decided you didn't want to do a Lone Star, because 200 of these is, you know, a lot of paper, but you, let's say you wanted to make a Lemoyne Star, where you'd need eight of these, you would fit them together like this, and then you would, but before you fit them all together, you would do three sides in black. Then you would just add another little strip, you know, three-quarter inch strip of black onto this side, and then what would happen, it would finish out at you know, like half an inch unfinished. And then once you sew it into a block, it's going to only show a quarter of an inch. So it would look like stained glass Lemoyne Star as well. So you're not getting, you know, it, it, depending on what you want to do with this, right? This is what this, you know, how this would look, right? Now, what you do is when you're sewing them into a Lone Star, you sew them like this and you make like four rows of four. Right, that's, and you would make, or five rows of four, yeah, five rows of five times eight would make 200. You can also make a smaller quilt by going four rows of four, four rows of four rows down, four rows across at times eight, and you wouldn't need as many of these blocks, and you would have a really good size lap quilt. Okay, so just keep that in mind. What, what do you want to make? How big do you want to make it? When you're doing five, of f five rows or the 200 stars or the 200 diamonds, it's a queen size. It really is. It's beautiful. So I hope you do try this. And, and it's a great fun way of getting rid of your strings. Um, we had questions about how to take them off. Now, the paper is on the back. 
And uh, you saw I had to tape some of this together to, you know, actually, you know, keep it together. Because I'm setting my sewing machine here at 25 to 30 stitches per inch. You, I am not sure what the modern machines is, but basically you just pull it. You know, you just pull them apart and they, they peel right off. You just peel them off. And the stay stitching does not make it harder to peel off. It just gives you a little edge to peel off separately, that's all. So with it doesn't take very long to do. Now, this is something grandchildren love to do. They love it. So <laughs> this is something you might want to keep in mind too. Like when it comes to even the black strips, yeah, they just they just pop off. And in no time at all. You've got, you know, this done without any, you know, sometimes it does, it's a little tough and I usually have a pair of tweezers with me, but most of the time you can just pull them off. It's fine. And remember that stay stitching helps you keep that bias edge from stretching there. And I will have to get a, but that's, that's what we're looking at. And most, like 99% of the paper has been taken off. I just have to go in now and pick the little bits off with uh, uh, tweezers and we're good to go. So that's how fast you can take them off. Oh, look, it just fell off. Okay. So there we are. I hope you try this. I hope you have a fabulous and creative week ahead. Um, remember, we're coming up near the in, near the end, and we're going to do a few viewer request videos because we've had lots of requests, uh, things to do, and then we're going to start on the sew along. Now, the sew along quilt will be the quilt of the exit video. So, if you see the quilt behind me on the exit, very exit, where I'm saying goodbye and thank you and please like, share, and subscribe and all this, that's the quilt we're doing the sew along on. So, have fun with these. Okay, bye. Take care. Thank you for watching our video today. We are just overjoyed with how our channel has grown. And um, we would like you to share, like, and subscribe these videos with your friends and other other people. Uh, this is one of the quilts that we might are considering at, at this time to do a sew along for. It is um, a crazy original scrappy design that was made with too much co coffee and too many granola bars and it's a lot of fun to do and it, it is a really good scrap buster so share like subscribe tell your friends about us uh, our plan for 2022 is two different so longs for sure and two different case studies and we're gonna do uh, try and do a thing on uh, grouping on uh, strings and crumbs and then another one on curves so we've got rather an ambitious 2022 planned for you here. So, like I say, I hope you come back. Have a great week ahead, and we'll talk to you later. Bye!